Hey, welcome back to Hump Day, Wednesday, August 21st. Thomas Miller back on the Fun Astrology Podcast. And we're going to keep this one, I promise, we're going to keep this one really short. Because we've already pretty much laid the groundwork for the next couple of weeks ahead. So if you're catching up, you can go back and listen to Monday and Tuesday's podcasts. Because Monday, we pretty much reviewed the big aspect between Pluto and Saturn coming up in January of next year. And yesterday, took a look at the next two weeks, the rest of this week and next week, as our fast-moving gang of Mercury, the Sun, Venus, and Mars all start to move into Virgo, which is complete by next Thursday. Mars moved in over the weekend. Venus moved in today. The Sun moves in on Friday. And then a week from Thursday, Mercury, which rules Venus. But I thought I'd just point out a couple of other aspects. So we still have that great trine. Oh, it's still looking so good. In fact, it's direct. Uh, It was direct overnight, actually. While you were asleep in the United States, Mercury was aligned with Jupiter. So it's on the, uh, the waning side of that aspect, but still very much in place. So everything that we, again, talked about yesterday is still there. The other big one is Uranus is in a trine, and it's going to catch these these guys, but right now it's in a trine with Mars. By Friday, Venus will be in there, and then the sun will follow next week. So Uranus, now Uranus is in retrograde. So there may be some added juice to this, but that energy is reflective of change, something unusual, maybe something technological around In essence, your power center, your godlike, Zeus-like component of your fiery energy, that fiery part of you, that part of you that gets stuff done, that could all be under the influence of this change. And then by the end of the week, let's add to the mix things around your love life, your home life, or your finances. But because it's a trine, we're on the favorable side of that change. So if you have an invoice to send, send it by the end of the week. Don't sit on it over the weekend. If you are single, get online. If you're married or in a committed relationship, do something you haven't done before or that you normally don't do. Go on a surprise date night on Friday night. That would be fun. Play with that changing energy because it's there to support you. And there's another grand trine. Man, I love this positive energy that's showing up in the chart. This one, kind of like what we talked about on Monday. It's the North Node, Neptune, and the Ascendant. So one of the fun things to do when we come across these little combinations of aspects, this is how you learn astrology. Because you can say, well, how does the Ascendant affect that? And these are the things that I'm trying to bring up as we can The ascendant is that point on the eastern horizon where the sun came up over the horizon the moment you were born. Call it sunrise. (laughs) Call it your sunrise. So it's the, I, I guess the way that I like to describe it best is when you talk about the oracle planet, and just for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into what the oracle planet is if you're interested in that. Just Google it. It's the planet that crosses up the ascendant before your sun on the day that you were born. Is the, the oracle planet is the heralding planet. It's the planet that announces to the world that you are coming. And I like to think of the ascendant in that way. It's the, hey, world, I am here. In soul-based astrology, the ascendant sign, your rising sign, that's the sign that your ascendant is in, is more important than your sun sign. You know, there are three signs you should always know, your sun, your moon, and your rising. And in soul-based astrology, when you look at why am I here, you start looking through the lens of the ascendant, what's in your first house. So it has life purpose to it as well. Well, that component of you is in a favorable relationship or favorable aspect with the north node. That's your soul karmic purpose. So see, the two are tied together. So today is going to be a really good day for you to take an extra 10 minutes at least sitting with your journal and just contemplating your soul's journey. 
And because Neptune is in there in this grand trine, the intuition as you quiet your mind and still your thoughts and take pen to paper and just let the pen flow, do some free writing around that. And just let your intuition speak. What is your soul's purpose? What are you doing here? And what might you work on today? What are some areas that you could change? Get on the right side of Saturn and Pluto. See, work with them. And that's how you do it. Ah, I love astrology. Love, love, love astrology. And I love you. Have a great hump day. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.